This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are here from a little bit unusual location studio this time. So with me, I have Henrik Fisker from Fisker. Now it's called Fisker Inc, right? Correct. Yes. And uh, Henrik is the CEO of Fisker Inc. And today we're going to have a little um, interview with Henrik. So we do it in, in, inside the Fisker Ocean. <laughs> Why not? Um, so right, we're just going to dive into it. I have prepared some questions that I think my audience want to ask you and I'm also curious about it. So first of all, the Fisker Ocean, uh, is it uh, a pure EV platform? Yeah, absolutely. It was started from a pure EV from ground up. And in fact, as we start working on this platform, we started with Magna Steyr and we wanted to make sure it had enough volume for this size of vehicle to really give us a long range. Secondly, um, I think that the entire interior uh, has a lot of space feel because it is a pure EV platform. So we took full advantage of that. So it started as a pure EV platform and it's all aluminum platform. Oh, ah, okay, okay. I, I might come back to that one also. Right. Since you mentioned aluminum. Um, so this platform, is it uh, like a generic platform you might use in future EVs? I wouldn't call it generic because we did so much development on this platform that made it very unique. So it's actually a Fisker IP, it's Fisker's platform. Would we share it with somebody? Maybe, you know, anything is possible. I think you're going to see a lot more sharing platforms between car companies in the future as we go EV. Oh, okay, but I meant within Fisker. So you might make a new oh. model that uses the same platform. Absolutely, we're already sharing parts of this platform uh, with future models. Oh, okay. All right, moving on. Um, I have to quickly go through all these questions. We have so many questions here. So um, next thing I, I noticed was that um, the pricing on this car. So there is this front wheel drive version and in Norway, it will start at 372K uh, and then the all-wheel drive version is 625k. Mm. Those are really competitive prices. How can you make it so affordable? Well, you know, one of the things that we decided was to create a very effective and efficient organization where we don't add all this extra cost to a car. So I think right now the traditional car industry is not very efficient and they've been okay with that for a long time because everybody was the same. Now we come out and we say, you know what? We're going to turn everything upside down. Why does there have to be such a big price difference from where the car comes out the factory to the ends up in customer's hand? Of course, you've got dealer margins. You've got thousands of, of uh, kroners put on top of each car because you have to pay for a whole bunch of people and buildings and offices that maybe are not contributing. So we are super asset light. And our idea was, let's see how we can get the price down and be more efficient. Secondly, we also went out and actually uh, planned for very high volume of our vehicles and therefore got lower pricing for some of our components. And finally, because we have a shorter development time, if you think about technology, every year technology falls in price. So if we can, check, if we can actually select our technology later, we get a much lower price. So most of our technology in our vehicle was selected last year and therefore has a lower price than if you selected your technology in 2019. And the truth is, if you buy a car this year, most likely your technology is three, three years or more old, whereas in ours, it was selected last year. Mm, okay, cool, cool. Um, now I have some questions about performance. So um, we have the, the Ocean Extreme and the, uh, the Ocean One. It can do zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.9 seconds. That is very impressive numbers uh, with 550 horsepower. Uh, and then I compare it. Recently, I tested the BMW iX, uh, the X Drive 50, and it has slightly less horsepower, uh, 523 horsepower, but it will do it in 4.5 seconds. So a lot slower than the Fis Fisker. Uh, and also when it comes to the weight, the, the, the iX is kind of heavy. Um, and then also compared to the Neo ES8, again, a similar, um, similar horsepower numbers, but uh, still not as fast as the Fisker. So how can you actually make it so fast? Well, you know, acceleration has to do with weight. Uh, so I think with the aluminum platform, we have a pretty good weight in, in our, in our uh, vehicle in terms of um, the size. Secondly, um, it is a very advanced powertrain uh, where uh, it's very efficient. Uh, the traction, uh, we have very good traction on our vehicle. We offer 
two different type of tires so you can actually have a 20 inch tires for very low rolling resistance and very long range and then you can offer you can have a high performance tire 22 inch with super grip for high performance um, so there's many things that actually has to do with uh, acceleration uh, not only just one thing uh, but I would say that uh, we are pretty proud of our acceleration numbers uh, it's something that maybe 10 years ago a Ferrari would have a hard time to get to. <laughs> so it's pretty exciting. Yeah, because you know, this, this kind of acceleration number, actually you have to match the BMW iX, the, the, the M60. That one will do it in roughly this time. Mm. So it must be, mean that maybe the horsepower uh, number, it, you have a flat power curve then. It has a very good power curve in this. In this uh, it is the latest technology that we're putting into this vehicle. It's one of the areas we want to really be competitive in, and it looks like we are. Yeah, wow. And uh, uh, does it have a launch control? It does. It has built-in. It also has a built-in booster, so there's a lot of stuff we haven't really announced yet, but there's a lot of unique technology in this vehicle that is pretty exciting, actually. And, of course, we also have uh, torque vectoring. Oh. Uh, so torque vectoring means that basically a computer controls each wheel, that helps both with acceleration as well as cornering and specifically also driving in snow because it actually means when, when, the, when the computer feels any of the wheels needs more traction, it can adjust it. And I actually tried it out on a, a course where you drive in circle and going up to let's say 70 kilometers an hour without torque vectoring, the car starts sliding out. You add torque vectoring or you add it on and it, you do the same and you pass 70 kilometers now and you feel like you're breaking the laws of physics and that's because of this advanced torque vectoring system and that also uh, improves acceleration obviously but do you actually use torque vectoring via the differential because you don't have multiple you have two motors so there's two motors and each wheel is uh, basically adjusted with torque vectoring so we're not saying yet how it's done <laughs> but we will tell something about it when we launch the vehicle okay i can't wait to try it <laughs> okay and also you know there's a, the, the ocean sport front wheel drive version will have 275 horsepower so i was thinking well in my head if you have that much power in the front wheel you will get torque steer mm. right? no I think it's a very no, it's a very uh, 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 very efficient and sophisticated powertrain, and it actually we have driven it, and it's it's really good. And also, I think again we chose front wheel drive here for snowy conditions. Uh, we think it was better. Obviously, uh, I think when you choose the sport version, you know you're not necessarily looking for driving this car like a sports car, uh, and you think about efficiency, range, pricing. So I think for the price, uh, you know, of 372,000 kroners, 275 horsepower, uh, 440 kilometer range, it's very competitive. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned uh, efficiency, by the way. Yeah. So, uh, the, uh, w can you tell me what kind of motors they use? Is it like a permanent magnet motor or is it induction motor? It's or? permanent magnet motor. Permanent. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I read in the press uh, release that you can, uh, if you had a all-wheel drive, mm. you can decouple the rear motor. Correct. How? Is it with the clutch? This or? is a very unique clutch, yeah. And that makes it a lot more efficient, so you don't have the drag of the other motor. Oh, yeah. so you actually use, so you have two PM motors. Um, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. <laughs> um, and then also the, uh, the, the, there is this version of Ocean Ultra, and it's also all-wheel drive. It's a little bit slower. Mm. Uh, is it based on the same motor and battery then the, as the... It's based on the same motor and battery, but you have to always think about the faster you make a vehicle, the more tear and wear you're going to have on a vehicle. So in the end of the day, you have to say, um, if you offer warranty on a vehicle, for example, um, you know, you allow up to a certain tear, tear and wear. And I think we've already seen that in gasoline engines as well. Whereas if you put up the boost on a turbocharger on a gasoline engine, it won't last as long. So it's eventually you, you can only do so much with a motor where you say, if you do more than that, it's gonna start deteriorating uh, uh, the tear and wear. So moving even from the ultra to the extreme, you know, there is a little bit of extra power in the extreme, but it's done with some booster and some other effective things that we're doing if you want to pay that extra price you can get it uh, but i think the ultra already gives you also a lot of performance in you know 4.2 seconds from zero to six uh, from zero to 100 kilometers now yeah, it's still faster than the other cars i mentioned yeah yeah <laughs> and then um, 
uh, also when you mention efficiency, mm. I want to know uh, what is the drag coefficient in this car? So, you know, we decided early on that drag coefficient was not going to be one of the key attributes. And two reasons. One, I didn't want to do another fastback like the Tesla Model Y and Ford Mackey and all these cars. I really wanted to do an SUV design and it inherently is not as good aerodynamics, but it's more utility and I think it looks better. Um, so we did work a lot on aerodynamics and I think for an SUV, it probably has one of the best aerodynamics. We have a lot of details. For example, you'll see on the rear uh, C pillars, uh, you can actually see some flaps for aerodynamics. You will see on the lower area of the car, there's some unique spoilers and some wind release fins, etc. We have done some unique things on the flat floor uh, with aerodynamics as well. But one thing you must remember is that for daily driving, specifically if a lot of your driving is in the city, aerodynamics have very little influence on your range. So if you have a super aerodynamic car with a certain range, if you do a lot of city driving, you'll not get that range. But if you have a vehicle where it's more about efficiency and a large battery, you'll get a lot more longer range because you're not depending only on aerodynamics yeah then actually weight is more efficient and then weight is important as well correct again i can't wait to weigh this car mm -hmm. <laughs> okay now i will switch over to another very in, in, uh, interesting topic in my audience and this is hwac so um uh does this will this, this car have a heat pump yes oh yeah, stand great. out in all the on the, all the models okay and great. a very efficient very good one Oh, so is it like, you know, like Volkswagen, uh, they always say it's going to work in minus 30 degrees. Well, don't forget, our vehicle is right now going through testing actually in Sweden. Oh. Uh, but also it's built in uh, Austria, which is also known for skiing resorts, etc. So I think this was a very important thing for us to have a very, very efficient heat pump. Okay. Uh, does it also have a PTC heater in addition then? That I cannot answer right now because we haven't given a lot of information about the battery pack and the battery system so uh we won't really um mention that yet we'll, okay. we'll let you know more for competitive <laughs> reason a little later okay i will ask you questions and then you will answer if you feel like it um does it have a separate battery heater i will have to answer that later okay um okay i can also say uh, will it preheat the battery before fast charging to precondition the battery for so those are all elements that we're going to announce a little later too as we start uh deliveries in november okay all right those are important things for norwegians yeah i know <laughs> and then uh, does it have any heat scavenging uh, for transferring heat from the motor we do yeah yeah we use that okay yeah. uh well i have also detailed questions uh can it can the motor heat up the battery can the motor heat up the battery? Yeah, in that mode. So we, again, all these details, I, I want to refrain a little bit from because <laughs> okay. we're doing the final fine tuning and we haven't announced it on, on our website or anywhere else. So we'll announce a little bit more about that as we get close to deliveries. All right. Okay. So I guess I'll skip the rest of it, but I had lots of questions about that one. <laughs> but um, also, uh, there was, as I mentioned, there was a different driving modes and one mm. of the driving modes was called uh, hyper uh, driving mode. Mm. Does that do any extra cooling for truck driving or heating up for, for let's say, acceleration launch? So I don't really believe too much in having to have to heat a car for 10 minutes before you can accelerate <laughs> in it. You know, we're not making a race car for the track. We're making a, a car for everyday use. And if I get to a stoplight and there's an annoying guy next to me <laughs> in a sports car, I just want to go zoom and pass him and that's it. Maybe once in a while. Um, so if you have to sit and wait 10 minutes to get heated the battery, then he's gone by then. So all our acceleration and everything else is really based on normal driving. Okay. All right. Um, and then the uh, next topic is about the digital radar. So uh, what are the advantages? This car has supposedly digital radar mm -hmm. compared to analog radar in other cars. What are the, the advantages? So the advantage of digital radars, which we have five of in the vehicle, one in center and then one in each corner. The advantage of, of digital radar versus analog radar is that it actually can see the height of an object. So normal radars more or less only measure the depth and not the height. And so it's more detailed, which means it can see if it's a dog running over the street or it's a child. And it can see if it's a person walking or it's a person on a bicycle. So it can do a little more uh, dissecting the images and therefore it's much safer. Secondly, uh, it sees better when it's dark and when it's uh, going, let's say, go through a tunnel. Uh, so there is just some advantages with a digital radar that actually ultimately 
in my view and in, in our view, allows our systems to be more safe and more reliable. Oh, interesting. You mentioned in the dark because uh, I almost hit a moose recently. <laughs> Could have been dead. Wow. So will the that's, and that can happen in Norway, I guess. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. can the system potentially uh, detect a moose? I, so our system is, like I said, very capable and it should be able to detect the moose. Okay, but yeah. traditionally, uh, if you want to have it in an Audi, you have to get night vision thermal camera to mm -hmm. detect moose. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, we, so we're the first one with a digital camera. We are going through all the testing right now with it, uh, sorry, digital radar. And the reason we're the first again is because we were able to pick this technology last year. So it will come into other luxury vehicles later. But we're oh. the first ones to have it. Yeah, you mentioned you picked the, yeah. the newest technology. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and then do, does it have any disadvantage in going digital? As far as I know, it doesn't have any disadvantages. Okay. And then uh, also very important for Norwegians, uh, will it, uh, can it be blocked by ice and snow? And so it should also function better in ice and snow. Really? Better? Yeah. yeah. Than a normal radar. Well, is it uh, any reason for... Uh, you know, again, it's the way it, it dissects the images and what it sees. And we have a video uh, that we are prepared for that and we'll go into some more details as we launch the system. But will it still be heated then for winter? We'll have, we'll show you all the details of the whole system. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, all right. So now we have a little bit of other various questions. Um, will it come with roof rack? Yeah, you can order roof rack. Okay. Do you know how many kilos it can hold? I don't have that in my head okay. right now. <laughs> yeah. And then, all right, power share. This car has something called power share, which is that you can also take power out, like, like a Hyundai Ioniq 5. And, and then the, you can, well, it has this power sharing uh, to between cars. Is it then done via type two or is it household plug? You know, so basically we have a plug already in the vehicle for that. So for a home, you can charge your home if you have a power out. Or let's say you have two electric cars, two Fiskars, and maybe it's your partner that didn't have enough charge and can't get home. You can go over, charge that person's car so they can get back home. But is it done, what kind of plug is it then? It's, we have the plug, it's, we have a plug which fits in the standard plugs. Is it type two or is it a, it's, a it, shuku? Uh, no, it's, it's, the, it's the standard plug that you have okay, in the car. A, oh, so, so it's household plug then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, the plug has to fit in, if it's from car to car, it's the car to car plug. But then you, you need a different, uh, because it's different gender, you have the male plug in one end. So exactly. you actually need a special There's cable. a special cable with, with the special plugs, yeah. Whoa, and then that means that actually if you plug into another another vehicle... That another vehicle, you can help them charge. And then this car will actually act as a charging station. That's right. Wow, yeah. that is the first car ever to do it. That's right. As far as I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to see it. <laughs> All right. And then, okay, so the stereo system here. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, you're from, uh, Henrik, you're from Denmark. <laughs> so Denmark is known for Bango Ulufsen and uh, Dyn Audio. Is it any of those brands? No, but you know, Bang & Olufsen, as far as I know, in the automotive is not owned anymore by anybody in Denmark. They sold it oh. to uh, uh, Panasonic, I believe. So we are using a division of Panasonic. Okay. And uh, we are creating, of course, for the top vehicle, we got a lot of uh, audiophiles in, in Fisker, and I also love a great stereo. So on the top version of Fisker, we will have an amazing, specially made stereo. In fact, we have designed specifically up behind in the, in the instrument panel room for some super big loudspeakers and woofers. So I think it'll have quite an amazing stereo. We, we think it might be one of the best in the world when in the top version. What? It comes from Denmark. It has to be good, right? <laughs> well, this doesn't come from Denmark. I would say Panasonic. I oh, think okay. it's not really Danish. <laughs> but, but you're Danish. So that's... Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Um, I think we're almost done now. So um, I want to ask you, will there be a six or seven seater version? So six seater, I don't really know how that would work. Hmm, yeah. I would assume six seater means there's two plus two, which doesn't make a lot of sense for me. So this obviously is a five seater. We do, we have package protected this vehicle to add another third row seat, which means it would be a seven seater. But bear in mind the size of this vehicle, like a Tesla Model Y, you're not looking at a full size vehicle with seven adults. So there's not gonna be two adults in the very back. It'll be children. Uh, so we're looking at introducing that at a later point in time. Hmm. All right. Um, and okay, so we're almost done now. Uh, lots of questions. Um, so I think well, what I'm going to mention is that, you know, today we have lots of uh, electric SUVs, crossovers, 
already on the market. Mm. So what makes the, the Fisker Ocean different from the other ones? Then? Well, you know, when we made the Fisker Ocean, I said we have to have at least three or four features that makes it different that nobody else has. First, we want to have the longest range of any vehicle in our price class that is an SUV or a crossover. So the 630 kilometers, I think, is the longest. Then I said, we need to have some features that nobody else has. Solar roof was one, so nobody has a solar roof. Two, we have the rotating screen, so it's upright when you drive, and if you want to watch a movie while you're charging or play games, it can turn around. Three, we have torque vectoring in our segment. I think that's pretty amazing. Uh, it totally changes the way the vehicle drives and performs. We have the bi-directional charging, that's number four. And number five, we have an interior, I think it's one of the most recyclable interiors with recyclable materials, it's all vegan. And I think, you know, that's sort of that next step against being sustainable, where the world is going, and I'm, I'm really proud of that. So that, those are all elements which definitely sets it apart. And I'm not even talking about things that are a little bit more subjective, like design, because that's something that somebody might like this car, somebody might not. So I won't really count that in as unique, even though I think it is. Um, but I think we have a lot of hardware features and software features, and there's even a few features we haven't even talked about yet. One of the things I'm very proud about the screen you can see here is when the screen turns, we have a floating button island where basically, uh, you know, the, the button stays. And you can see a bit. And of you that. can see here how it turns, and but the button stays in the same position. And ergonomically, you have your arm on the armrest and you reach the buttons very easy. And for me, I love to drive. And I think it's important to have some buttons that you actually tactile can feel so you don't have to look at a screen. Because if you just want to quickly change your heating, I don't want to have to look at the screen. I want to just feel it, do it while I drive. Actually, I like that way, you think. <laughs> because I've tried so many cars where it's clumsy to use the system. And just like you mentioned the whole, yeah. yeah. But I, I think I need to mention that uh, the BYD Tang already has the rotating screen. That's right, but you know, this is a, first of all, we put a, a patent on this one, hmm. and you have to look at the size of this. You know, this is 17.1 inch uh, yeah. screen. And to make it with this larger screen, you actually need a connection to the electric steering column, because as you can see, it actually is right next to the steering wheel. So this moves in, in a correct position. Uh, so that's something we had to work a long time on. Also on the safety aspect, we had to do a lot of safety testing on this vehicle. And I don't know if the vehicle you mentioned is not sold in Europe or US as far as I know. No, it's sold in Norway. Or maybe yeah. it's sold in Norway, okay. But in US we have very strict, strict uh, head impact rules. So you have to fulfill some strong rules there. But again, I think the size of the screen is, is pretty unique. 17.1 hmm. inch screen. Yeah, because I, want, I wanted to mention that, um, and also uh, the Hyundai Ioniq 5 already has a solar roof, and they have the two-way uh, thing, where you, well, it's, they call it vehicle to load. I don't think that solar roof, by the way, uh, charges the uh, high voltage battery. Ours does. Oh, I think it actually does, but it's kind of slow. <laughs> yeah. But what my point is that you have some features in some car. This car seems to have all those features in the same car. That's, well, that's different. That's different. Yeah. Uh, you know, and again, it's also about if you make a feature, I think, strong enough that it makes a difference. You know, 17.1 inch screen, our solar roof can give you over 3,000 kilometers a year in ideal conditions. So I wanted to make sure that this was something that really had a serious function. Hmm. Yeah, well, um, sounds super interesting. Actually, uh, just sitting in here, I feel like I want to touch everything and take it for a spin, but okay, it's not possible. Very soon. <laughs> very soon, very <laughs> soon. So, uh, and, uh, okay, um, I think uh, we just have to end now. I could speak even longer with Henry, but um, I, I will also, towards the end, show you some of the questions that I would ask, but again, we won't get the answer anyway. I think one last thing I might ask you. So, you mentioned that 630 kilometers. When I heard it, I read about it, I was like, is that even possible? You, 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 you really claim you can go 730 kilometers. 630. Oh, sorry, sorry, 600, 630. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is the longest range in any class. Well, I mean, well in, in this no, class. Uh, yeah, in this class. Yeah, I mean, obviously one. you got some bigger cars, but you have to remember that it's also about how you actually, the architecture of the vehicle is and how much volume you can get in the battery. Because it's, like I said, it's not only about efficiency and aerodynamic, eventually you need a bigger battery. 
So we are able to put quite a large battery in our top model. Uh -huh. And that has to do with how the floor architecture is designed. So it's not a typical rectangle, it has a little different shape, uh, which makes it more efficient. And we also have a very energy dense battery pack, which I think might be leading right now in the world. So it's a combination of several things. All right, yeah. So um, I think we just have to wait for the final, uh, uh, yeah, final uh, numbers. But uh, yeah, I, I, sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah I have absolutely. to say it sounds interesting. Good to talk so, to you. Yeah, and nice to talk to you also. So <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's going to be it for now. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later. Take care.